surrounded by the highest mountains in the world is the fascinating world of Nepal, the Golden Kingdom of the Himalayas. Compared to the hubbub of the Nepalese capital of Kathmandu, the lakes of the Pokhara Valley, located 200 kilometers to the west, are tranquil and relaxing. The freshwater lakes, the Pokhari, also gave the region its name. With around 150,000 inhabitants, the city of Pokhara is located in the center of the valley that until the middle of the 20th century was little known to those from outside. But in the last 20 years, this dreamy, once remote and mysterious city has changed dramatically. Indeed, it is now a popular center of tourism. Today, Pokhara has around 60,000 annual visitors, despite the fact that unlike other areas of the country, it contains few historical treasures. The importance of religion in the lives of the local population is highlighted by the most famous and oldest sacred building in Pokhara, the Bindyabasini Temple, as well as in several other smaller sanctuaries. Much of the city's history is still to be discovered but it's believed that members of the Gurung were the first to settle here. With the arrival of the Niwa from Kathmandu Valley, the tiny settlement gradually developed into a city. At that time, Pokhara had an increasing number of multi-floored houses and a large number of temples. During the Islamic conquest by Shamsuddin Ilyas in 1349, Muslims also began to settle in Pokhara. As with Nepal, the Pokhara Valley is well known for its diverse ethnic population. Its various ethnic groups have retained their ancient rituals and traditions. However, the historic trade route that once led to Tibet and that was instrumental in the founding of Pokhara no longer exists. Fortunately, many of the region's former merchants have found alternative ways of making a living. Pokhara Valley has become the second most popular tourist destination in Nepal. And here, close to the impressive mountain peaks of the Annapurna and Dalagiri Massif, this land of adventure begins.
Just two kilometers from Bukhara Airport is one of the city's major attractions, the Patala Chango, the Divas Waterfall. The waterfall's English name dates back to a tragic accident in 1961 when a trekker lost his life. The sluice gates of a dam had been opened at Fiwa Lake. The sudden surge of water caused by this spelled tragedy for the unsuspecting victim. Today, the entrance to the Divas waterfall has been made safer. The river that flows from Lake Fiwa also travels beneath the rocky terrain. After around 200 meters, the water reappears once again and meets with the river Seti. Several bridges provide an exceptional view of the river. The climate of the Pokhara Valley is subtropical, as can be seen by the local vegetation. However, the beauty of nature cannot hide the fact that the lives of the rural population are dominated by abject poverty. Today's manufacture of modern Nepalese carpets and rugs is closely linked to the country's Tibetan refugees. After Tibet was annexed by China in the 1950s, many Tibetans fled their home country and took refuge in neighboring territories, including Nepal, where they introduced their weaving skills. Lake Fiwa is not only picturesque, in recent years, its waters have been successfully harnessed in order to produce electricity. And so it has played an integral role in the development of the city of Pokhara. the lake is one of the city's most popular tourist attractions. A relaxing boat trip is an enjoyable way to enjoy the sights. Situated on an island close to the shores of the lake is an idyllic Hindu sanctuary, the Barahi Bawani Temple. Barahi is known as a form of the goddess Kali, the personification of elementary female power and one of the most mysterious deities in the Hindu religion. During various special occasions and celebrations, animal sacrifices are made in honor of this destructive and frightening deity. Several myths surround the lake. One such story has it that a beautiful valley was once located on the site of the lake. However, the inhabitants of this prosperous valley became increasingly hostile.
When Shiva visited the valley disguised as a beggar, the local people chased him away, with the exception of an elderly couple. The punishment of the gods followed this event. Huge torrents of mountain water began to flood through the fertile valley and annihilated the population. Only the elderly couple were saved. It has been discovered that some time ago erosion did indeed cause a glacial lake to flood the valley. The lakes and surrounding mountains of the Himalayas are a truly harmonious and unique sight. The snow-covered peaks located some 50 kilometers away ascend for more than 8,000 meters. The Bukhara Valley is therefore an ideal starting point for various trekking expeditions. Agriculture and livestock have always been of great importance for the population of the valley. Cleverly designed terraces have been created for the cultivation of rice. The terraces add a picturesque quality to the splendid scenery. A wonderful setting that has to be seen to be believed. But the idyllic scenery can be deceptive. Rice and corn are now relatively scarce due to the increase of the country's population. Once covered by dense jungle, Nepal's Terai lowland was much feared as it was a hotbed of malaria. Even though it contains much natural scenery, this area has seen many changes in the last hundred years. With the deforestation of the Sal forests, the threat of malaria was much reduced, but the number of wild animals in this region has also fallen. The vast forest areas of Chitwan in the south of the country on the border with India provide a surprisingly diverse variety of flora and fauna and make its nickname of the heart of the jungle appropriate. Accompanied by the curious glances of some of its natural inhabitants, visitors to the 1400 square kilometer Royal Chitwan National Park can still enjoy its natural jungle scenery. Until the middle of the 20th century, the majority of today's nature reserve belonged to the Rana rulers, who were originally responsible for endangering much of the region's exceptional wildlife. The past monarchs of this region once overhunted this wonderful land and destroyed much of its wildlife. In 1962, the first animal reserve was set up in Terai to prevent further poaching and to protect an endangered species, the Indian rhino.
The Royal Chitwan National Park was founded in 1973. Although the Indian and Nepalese Rajas killed many animals, in the 1960s it was poachers who created a major threat. Only by way of a strong military presence and constant surveillance was the unscrupulous work of the poachers brought to an end. The Asian elephant has become rare due to its diminishing habitat. Large numbers of them are used for both labor and recreation. For visitors, a ride on the tame and gentle giants is a most spectacular and secure way in which to travel through the Royal Chitwan National Park. It pays to adhere to the park's regulations, as each year a number of visitors are injured or even killed by the rhino. Cobras, pythons and large wildcats are also a threat. For more than 15 years, a research program has been dedicated to the near-extinct Bengal tiger. However, the park's largest predator, the rhino, is a far more frequent sight. The Royal Chitwan National Park consists of various types of scenery and unites both jungle-like forests, vast grasslands and several lakes. The nature reserve owes its increasing popularity to the elephant that makes it safe to travel across the natural terrain. The impressive variety of wildlife consists of 55 species of amphibians and reptiles, over 50 mammals and well over 400 varieties of bird. The protection offered by the National Park has helped the Asian rhino to survive, especially as they once only numbered around a hundred. They had been hunted solely for commercial reasons. An aphrodisiac is still produced in Eastern Asia. Today, around 500 rhinos live here. As the rhino is intimidated by the elephant, tourists are kept at a safe distance and need have no fear of attack.
but a speedier method of experiencing the vast Chitwan Nature Reserve is offered by the Jeep that travels a mite faster than our four-legged friends. In order to accommodate a larger number of tourists, an increasing number of environmentally friendly pathways have been created. The tourist guides often demonstrate their amazing knowledge in the art of tracking. Even though the tracks are fresh, the animals who made them are nowhere to be seen. Rapti, Ru and Narayani are the largest rivers in the alluvial areas of the reserve. Another highlight of the Chitwan National Park is the canoe safaris. Ornithologists particularly appreciate the advantages of the almost noiseless canoes that can make it easier to observe the local bird life. It's also sometimes possible to observe two amphibians such as the marsh mugger and the almost extinct and fish-eating Gariel crocodile. The endangered Gangetic Garial is a unique crocodile. Worldwide, only 200 of these animals remain in the wild. Most live here in the Narayani River in the Chitwan National Park. Each evening, various performances on the periphery of the park provide an atmospheric way in which to appreciate the beauty of nature. For many centuries, the inhabitants of the malaria-infected jungle, the Taru, were almost completely cut off from the outside world. The artistic Taru stick dance is undoubtedly one of the most fascinating highlights of the nightly cultural programs in the park's many lodges. With around 600,000 members, the Taru tribe is the most important ethnic group in the Tarai region. The Chitwan region has managed to preserve many of its age-old traditions right up to the present day. Modern life is far more obvious in Kathmandu Valley than in the south of the country. But this region's rich historical heritage, with its magnificent temples and palatial buildings, is still a magnificent sight. The valley is like a huge treasure trove. And it's where the cultural development of Nepal first began. Despite its slow development, this land has preserved much of its fascinating medieval atmosphere.
Year after year, Kathmandu, the capital of the Nepalese kingdom, attracts more and more visitors who cannot fail to be impressed by the rich variety of its historic monuments. A growing number of Nepalese have also started to come here in order to escape rural poverty and in the hope of leading a more secure life. Yet most of these hopes come to nothing as Kathmandu is bursting at the seams, with little room for its poverty-ridden inhabitants. The royal city of Patan, formerly Lalitpur, has blended in with the nearby rival metropolis of Kathmandu. Durbar Square is at the center of urban life in Patan, whose history dates back more than 2,000 years. Yet the Kumbhashvara Temple, the oldest Hindu sanctuary in Patan, only dates back to 1392. Its five stories dominate most of the city. During the reign of King Sidi Narashima Mala, Bataan became the seat of an independent kingdom and thus attained the status of a royal city that was both architecturally and culturally influenced by the rise of Hinduism. Prior to this, Lalitpur was known as a center of Buddhism, with more than 150 monasteries, including the most famous main monastery, the so-called Golden Temple, the Kwa Bahal. With a population of around 75,000, Bhaktapur, once an independent royal city, is the third largest city in Kathmandu. Of all three royal cities, the historic part of Bhaktapur has remained the most original. Unlike Kathmandu, it does not possess any modern concrete buildings. Unfortunately, a great earthquake in 1934 devastated much of Bhaktapur. It destroyed the area around Durbar Square and many of its wonderful buildings. Thus, Durbar Square once contained far more buildings than it does today. Luckily, the famous carved peacock windows survived the earthquake. Potter's Square is full of activity. Another remarkable attraction of Bhaktapur that is extremely popular with foreigners.
The Swayambhuna Temple is one of the greatest cultural attractions in Nepal. It's also one of the country's most important Buddhist sanctuaries. There are many legends of the development and origins of this site. It was first mentioned in 460 AD when a monastery was founded here by King Manadeva. The present design of the temple dates back to an outstanding Niwa ruler of the 17th century, King Pratapamala who also influenced the design of the central stupa of Swayambunat. Even today, the temple and monastery of Swayambunat is an architectural and cultural gem. The most important and most visited Hindu sanctuary in Nepal is to be found in the temple district of Pashupatinath in the east of Kathmandu. As with the daily hordes of pilgrims, the waters of the Bagmati River flow past the ceremonial cremation sites of the Hindus, the Ghats. The burning of the dead traditionally takes place on the shores of a river in order that the ashes of the deceased may be carried to the sacred river Ganges. The conspicuous ascetics, the sadhus, have become living institutions of Pashupatinat. Only part of the holiest Hindu temple in Nepal is open to non-Hindus. Yet even this often fascinates visitors due to its amazing atmosphere. Apart from the Swayambhunat Stupa, Bodhnat, otherwise known as Tiny Tibet, is the most important Buddhist sanctuary and also the largest sacred building of its kind in Kathmandu Valley. In the 1950s, when Tibet was occupied by China, many of its inhabitants fled to Nepal as they were persecuted in their home country for their religious beliefs. Thus, the Bodhnad Stupa is of particular significance for the Tibetan refugees. For the Tibetans, Bodhnad is of the greatest importance. In recent years, more and more Tibetan monasteries have appeared in the town. The Changu Narayan Temple is one of a total of seven World Heritage Sites in Kathmandu Valley. And it's also one of the most historic locations of Vishnuism. In the workshops of the charming village of Narayan, one can gain a fascinating insight into the century-old traditions of local arts and crafts and the manufacture of magnificent wooden figures and masks. In quiet seclusion, far away from the tourist trail, the natural ambience of the village is a captivating experience.
The temples were given their present design at the beginning of the 18th century. But the origin of this little visited sanctuary dates back to the 5th century. In stark contrast, Dakshin Kali is located just a few kilometers from the city of Kirtipur. Almost 400,000 pilgrims visit this sacred place each year. The temple is not for animal lovers or the faint-hearted. Each day, numerous animals are sacrificed here in order to satisfy the benevolence of the goddess. Kali, the bloodthirsty goddess of death, is one of the most popular and most revered goddesses in Nepal. In Dakshin Kali, she is the symbolic guardian to the southern entrance of Kathmandu Valley. The first tranquil impression of Kirtipur is deceptive as the small town of 15,000 inhabitants has a bloody past. Life here was once far from peaceful and idyllic. In the middle of the 18th century, the people of Kirtipur fought off the invading Gurkha troops of Prithivi Narayan Shah. But two years later, they were unable to survive a second attack. The truculence of the local inhabitants has also become evident in recent years such as in 1990 during riots and protests against the absolute power of the Nepalese king. However, the ancient Niwar town of Kirtipur has now become peaceful once again. Its alleys and squares are now full of the laughter of children. Thirty kilometers beyond Kathmandu is yet another historic center. Several small, charming villages and towns are hidden within the Banipa Valley, along with many further attractions. The rural character of this area has remained mostly unchanged. It is untouched despite its close proximity to the largest and most populated area in Nepal, Kathmandu Valley. Here it's possible to enjoy the beautiful scenery and visit various sanctuaries and historic buildings in Banipa Valley in the most relaxed and unhurried way. In the past, the town of Banipa, located only 10 kilometers beyond Bhaktapur, was more prosperous than it is today, especially during the Mala period when it had much more political significance than it now enjoys. Architecturally, the 17th century Bhagavati sanctuary in the small hamlet of Nala, just outside Banipa, is most impressive.
With the Kandasvari Mandir, the holy district of Banipa boasts a building that is not only notable for its architecture, but also for its exquisite decor. The artistically designed Berava fresco, situated on the western external wall of the main shrine, features various frightening forms of Shiva. In the middle of the 14th century, the local nobility became independent and controlled vast parts of the Banipa Valley. But their newly won independence soon came to an end. At the end of the 14th century, under King Jayas Titimala, came political change that was designed to prevent increasing fragmentation and to restore unity. By the introduction of a caste system, the country's entire social structure was completely transformed. Tourism has not yet come to Banipa, even though the small town contains some interesting sanctuaries. Eight kilometers south of Banipa, on the picturesque Ponyamata Kola River, is the charming old Niwa settlement of Panauti, with numerous beautiful temples and sanctuaries. The recently restored three-story Brahmayani temple that dates back to the 17th century contains several beautiful sacred works of art and is accessible by way of a picturesque bridge. For centuries, everyday life in Panauti has been a tranquil affair. Here, time almost stands completely still. The alleys are mostly tranquil and empty. It is but once a year during a festival at the end of September that the town awakes from its dormant state. Foreigners are few and far between in the romantic center of Panauti. The local population keeps itself to itself. The country's poverty and its low development status in Nepal is apparent by its education system. For a long time, a modern school education was the sole preserve of the reigning upper classes. Until the middle of the 20th century, the number of schools here was very limited and even today, the education facilities leave a lot to be desired. It's no surprise, therefore, that illiteracy is still rife among the Nepalese population. Russell Star, can I go out there, sir? This thing, you need a light down. TV, put on the down, sir. Put it up on the down, sir. Fifty-eight percent of the people here cannot read or write. However, the creation of a conventional education system is now beginning to develop. The old district of Panauti is an indication of how life must once have been in today's capital of Kathmandu.
The hopes of the people of Panauti now therefore rest on the development of tourism, as it seems that it will only be a question of time until this new town will be discovered by foreign visitors. There are many historic attractions here, such as the Indreshvara Temple. It is the center of the impressive temple complex of Panauti. The sanctuary was built at the beginning of the 15th century, although it's believed that its origins are much older. In 1988, a powerful earthquake destroyed much of the town. Some parts of the Indreshvara temple were also ruined, but today it can be seen once again in all its splendor. The origin of this beautiful temple stems from the city's unique geographic location. According to Hindu belief, Panauti is a holy place. When Panauti was first founded, its strategic location played a decisive role, as it was once a junction of various important trading routes. Apart from the beautiful scenery and wonderful panoramic views of the Himalayas, Duli Kel, 1,650 meters above sea level, contains a number of outstanding temples. Despite its cultural atmosphere, Duli Kel is not frequented by many tourists. However, this small town, located 30 kilometers beyond Kathmandu, is a most intriguing place. The small main square in the western part of the town is decorated by a fountain-like pool that, among others, is also dedicated to Shiva, the most dazzling deity of the Hindu religion. Beautiful views of the valley, the three-story pagoda made of brick and wood is dedicated to a special goddess, Bhagvati, a female manifestation of Shiva. In each corner of Nepal, religion is alive and well. The country is proud of the fact that it is the only Hindu kingdom in the world that has survived to the present day. Hinduism is a state religion as 90% of the population are Hindu. Various bloody religious ceremonies, on the other hand, are still often misunderstood by non-Hindus. But regardless of the natural beauty of the country and its cultural treasures, perhaps it is its mystique that adds to the attraction of Nepal and which seems to draw more and more people here from all over the world. Nepal, the rooftop of the world, which along with its splendid valleys offers historic world heritage sites of great cultural value, as well as a wealth of fascinating natural scenery.
Nepal's long history that reaches back to mythological times has generated many magnificent cultural epochs and dynasties, the remains of which can still be seen and marveled at today. Surrounded and protected by the highest mountains in the world, in a truly magical setting, where the earth seems to touch the sky, the golden kingdom of the Himalayas lives on in perfect timeless beauty and majestic brilliance. <laughs>